Space fans, uh, we thought you might enjoy a brief tour of the Skylab, America's first space station. With us up here at uh, 275 miles, uh, whirling around the Earth at 18,000 miles an hour, and having a sunrise and a sunset every hour and a half. At the moment, you're looking uh, to the very base, or the basement of the workshop, where the crew quarters level is located. And you're looking from the very attic, or the tunnel, through which we entered the Skylab from the command module. It looked much like this as you see it when we first entered it. It looks kind of like a lonely house that's uh, been put away for a vacation for a while and everything is neatly in order. Just waiting for its occupants to return, much as you would return to your house after a vacation. But we put it in living condition and working order in, in a pretty short time, and uh, now we're living very comfortably up here and enjoying zero G and getting lots of work done. We want to uh, show you a few of the uh, particular items that are uh, parts of our everyday life and uh, parts of our work here in Skylab. We thought that uh, perhaps the first thing you'd enjoy looking at was uh, the uh, very piece of equipment that is uh, located to my left here. and. Uh, taking this all down on tape. This is a video tape recorder. As you may know, uh, we don't have uh, ground stations end-to-end uh, -end across the Earth, so we uh, periodically uh, come in contact. And, and uh, most of the time, however, we're out of ground, ground contact. In fact, about 30% of the time uh, is all the time we spend talking to the ground. And we could not send this picture down to you without without uh, recording it on this tape because we're not presently over ground stations. So everything that is recorded here is recorded on this tape recorder, and then the, t the ground can dump it and, and uh, collect this great telecast. Now let's move on around here to uh, another uh, interesting uh, piece of equipment with, which gets a lot of work from us. Just take a cut here. I'll say no. One of our major objectives in Skylab is to look at Earth and its resources. We want to look at its forestry and its agriculture, its freshwater resources, its weather, its uh, pollution, and a number of, of other resources that are uh, very important to us on the Earth. And this is some of the equipment that we use to do that. This is called our Earth Resources Experiment Package. It consists of uh, about uh, six experiments with which we uh, look at the Earth, and we spend a lot of time taking data here. This particular instrument is a telescope. And we can uh, see uh, resolution down to a quarter of a mile square. For example, we can see a city block with this telescope, and we can home our instruments in on it and take data of Earth resource nature on that a particular object or that field or that forest or that body of water or that uh, mining area or the geologic area that we're interested in. To take data on, it's all recorded on tape and sent to the ground. We have another battery of uh, experiments also that are associated with Earth resources. and. Uh, they are these cameras that take actual photographs and different wavelengths of light. We have six cameras, as you can see here, and they click away uh, as we pass over the ground, taking photographs at just about uh, any rate that we want to set. And then uh, these photographs are then are returned to ground and uh, processed and evaluated. And the purpose, of course, is to learn how to use our resources on Earth more efficiently and more effectively. This battery of cameras is rotated down to this window. And when this window is uncovered, you can see the Earth below going by at four miles per second, but still we can get some very good pictures of the Earth and its resources. This is the control panel uh, from which we control the rest of the Earth resources experiments. It takes two men to run this uh, battery of experiments, one working the telescope and the other working this main control panel, and from it, we operate all of the experiments that are associated with Earth resources. Another uh, set of experiments that we have on Skylab uh, is to uh, explore the industrial uses of space. Here before you have a, uh, an electron beam welding gun. That doesn't look like a welding gun that we have on Earth, but it's uh, operated by a high intensity or high energy beam of electrons, which will strike uh, metallic uh, material in this chamber, which can be evacuated, and it's uh, capable of melting the metal and of welding two pieces together. Additionally, uh, with this uh, chamber and the electric beam gun, we can uh, produce uh, perfect spheres or ball bearings. So, uh, grow crystals in here, as you know, perhaps uh, much of metallurgy and uh, crystal growth 
and the formation of metals is very dependent upon gravity. We believe that we can grow perfect crystals and uh, in perfect metals without the uh, presence of gravity, and we're examining that particular phenomenon here in Skylab. We're also uh, uh, doing flammability experiments where we can put a specimen to be burned inside this chamber and uh, determine how it burns in the absence of gravity. Fire, of course, and its propagation is dependent upon gravity on the Earth, and we believe that perhaps in uh, studying uh, the flammability characteristics of several types of materials in this environment, uh, we can uh, determine how to make uh, materials in a better way to uh, equip our spacecraft in the future such that we'll have less probability of fire and uh, catastrophes, of, catastrophes of that sort. In addition, we expect that as time goes on, we'll find additional industrial uses of, uh, of space. And we, uh, knowing the uh, Yankee ingenuity of the, the, um, the industrial complex in our country, I'm sure that they can come up with many applications of zero G in space for the uh, production of, of metals and other items of use for our everyday consumption. Another place where we spend a lot of time uh, during the every daylight is uh, at the control panel for the solar telescopes. We have eight solar telescopes with which we can continually look while we're on the uh, sunny side of the Earth. Our orbit uh, takes us about an hour and a half to completely go around the Earth. About an hour of this is spent in daylight, and the other half hour is spent in darkness, of course. But during that hour of daylight, we have somebody constantly at this panel during working hours looking at the sun with these eight different telescopes. Now, we can look at the sun on Earth as well. But, of course, on the Earth, the atmosphere blocks a good deal of the information that comes from the sun. It's a good thing it does, too, because otherwise we'd be fried to a crisp. But up above the Earth's atmosphere here, we can get all of the information that comes from the sun and record it on our telescopes, through our telescopes, on the film, and bring it back to ground for analysis of the sun. Of course, this is a very important study because, as you know, the sun controls our very environment, controls our weather, it controls our very life and our existence on Earth. Besides, of course, learning more about our own uh, climate and weather and environment and its relation to the sun, we believe that perhaps there are some energy Process taking, processes taking place on the sun, which we can reproduce in our own laboratories and perhaps on Earth to generate new power sources, which are similar to those on the sun, to accomplish the various jobs that we face in our modern society. Now we'll take a quick look at the uh, control panel that we use to control the electrical power system on board the Skylab. This is the control panel from which we do the, from which we do this. The Skylab is run entirely on solar power. We have solar panels on the outside of the spacecraft which collect sunlight and convert it into electricity and then it's transferred into the spacecraft here and we light our lights or run our equipment or heat our heaters or run our fans and do everything electrically with sunlight. Perhaps the day will come when uh, we do more uh, use uh, sunlight as an energy source uh, more than we do now, but this is uh, at least the beginning. Now you're going to ask me naturally what happens when we go behind the Earth for that star. Well, we have some batteries which are charged up during the daytime. So besides running the lights in the spacecraft during the daytime, the batteries are also charged up. And when we go into the nighttime, the batteries take over and supply that electricity that we need. And then in the daylight again, they're recharged, and the cycle continues every hour and a half to recharge the batteries, to providing power for the whole space station. Additionally, we have a caution and warning system here. In the event that we have a fire or a rapid pressure loss or many other malfunctions within the spacecraft which need immediate attention, we have a caution and warning system here that alerts us both day and night to the problems. For example, I can uh, test the fire warning system in this manner. You can hear a loud siren, a master alarm, and some warning lights come on. Or perhaps if we have a rapid pressure loss, we have another sound for that. Or if we have another warning tone, we have another sound. Nobody could ignore that. Nobody can sleep through it either. 